welcome to your new wine video. I'm your host, Julien Michel, French qualified winemaker and wine writer. So, Cabernet Sauvignon is without a doubt the most famous of all wine grapes and I'm sure many of you have heard about it and like a good glass of Cabernet Sauvignon wine every once in a while, right? But have you ever wondered what you're actually drinking and wanted to learn a little bit more about it? Well, you are in the right place. These are the top five facts that you should know about Cabernet. Let's go. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there's something that you have to know. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. The reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, might be part of the reason, but because they truly love the wines that they choose, and I do too. You can check them out through the link in the video description, and I'll tell you more about them at the end of this video. But let's get into our video for now. Despite what some people might think, Cabernet Sauvignon is not only a type of wine. Well, to be precise, Cabernet Sauvignon is in fact a type of grape we make wine from, or what we call a wine grape variety. And I made a video a few weeks ago on this very channel about what are grape varieties and why they matter to wine, if you'd want to learn more about this grape variety topic. So this variety, this type of grape that we call Cabernet Sauvignon is now the most famous of all red wine grapes and the most drunk red wine in the United States, just overtaken by Chardonnay, which is obviously a white grape. But in fact, Cabernet Sauvignon originates from France and more precisely the Bordeaux wine region of France. It was there that during the 17th century, a new type of grape was created crossing vines of Cabernet Franc, which is another type of red grapes from France, with the white grape Sauvignon Blanc. So the result of this crossing, so that's the pollinizing of a vine of Cabernet Franc with a flower of Sauvignon Blanc, was so good and so fragrant that Cabernet Sauvignon became, with Merlot, Bordeaux Winery's favorite grape to grow there. From its debut in Bordeaux, Cabernet Sauvignon has now been planted all around the world in virtually every wine producing nation all around the globe. Having its origin in France, and France being the second biggest wine producing country in the world, just behind Italy, it'll come as no surprise that France is the number one capsule wine making nation. There, Cabernet Sauvignon is mainly grown in Bordeaux and more generally the southwestern part of the country, even though in France it's generally Cabernet Sauvignon is blended with other grapes to form what we call, well, the Bordeaux blend. And that's why you don't actually find the name Cabernet Sauvignon printed on that many labels of French wines. Well, there are a few examples like this one. But yeah, we will get back to blending and what it makes for Cabernet Sauvignon in a moment. You might be surprised, however, that after France, the second biggest largest wine producing nation of Cabernet Sauvignon is Chile in South America. That actually somewhat unexpectedly produces a little more, a little more Cabernet Sauvignon wine than the United States, which comes at the third place despite the huge popularity of Cabernet Sauvignon wine in the US. So there in the United States, obviously Cabernet Sauvignon is mainly grown and planted in California, particularly in the northern part of California, like the Napa and the Sonoma Valleys, with also a huge amount of bulk Cabernet Sauvignon coming out of the Central Valley. Other very significant producers of Cabernet Sauvignon wine include, by descending order of production, Australia, Spain, China, Argentina, Italy or South America. But if you wanted, you could virtually find Cabernet Sauvignon wines from virtually any country, you know, like Bulgaria, Mexico, New Zealand, Greece and many, many more. Now, with all these countries making Cabernet Sauvignon wines, there's got to be a few great wines being produced in many different countries. And of course, quality of wine or how good wines are is a subjective matter. So there is no absolute on where the best caps of wines come from. And I guess this is open for debate. But if you look at the international wine critic scores and at the most demanded and priciest Cabernet Sauvignon based wines, well, you'll have to look 
at California and the Napa Valley in particular, as well as the left bank of Bordeaux to find the very best examples. So since 1976 and what's called the Judgment of Paris, and you might have seen the movie Bottle Shock, so the Judgment of Paris was a blind tasting organized in France with French wine experts where the tasters didn't know what they were tasting, so blind tasting, and they were tasting Bordeaux wines against Napa Valley Cabernet. The judges who tasted blinds actually preferred the Napa wines over some of the best Grand Cru's, the best chateaus of Bordeaux. So since 1976, there's no arguing that California makes some of the best Cabernet wines in the world. In Bordeaux, you'll have to look at the left bank of the Garonne River, so the sub-regions of Medoc and Graves, for example, to find blends with more Cabernet than Merlot in places like Margot, Poyac or saint Estelle. while on the right bank in areas such as Saint-Emilion or Pomerol, as well as generally all across the Bordeaux region, the blends are going to be dominated by Merlot over Cabernet Sauvignon. Now, if you ask me, and during my winemaking career, I made some wines during about 10 years in many different countries, including many Cabernet Sauvignon wines. I trained in Bordeaux, I qualified as a winemaker from Bordeaux, and I worked at some of the most prestigious estates in Bordeaux, like Chateau Margaux, and I've got some fantastic memories of the Cabernet Sauvignon wines produced on the left bank, especially the top Grand Cru's like Chateau Margaux, Chateau Latour, or Chateau Mouton Rothschild, for example. Those are going to be the more cooler climate Cabernet Sauvignon wines, but they're not necessarily ripe and as good and as opulent in every single vintage because the vintage variation in Bordeaux is very significant. But I've got also fantastic memories of making Cabernet Sauvignon wines in Sonoma County as well as on the coast of Tuscany. So we are not in Tuscany in the inland part like the Chianti area, but on the coast, because it's a little bit warmer, they make some fantastic, rather opulent, still refined Cabernet Sauvignon wines. As well, I've made some uh, Australian Cabernet Sauvignon in cooler parts like the Margaret River area in Western Australia. And I made some also in a small island that's called Kangaroo Island, believe it or not, in Australia. And there are some delicious, delicious Cabernet Sauvignon wines. So the expression and the work of the winemakers on those Cabernet Sauvignon wines varies depending on the country, the type of climate, the terroir and everything else in the expression, um, but it's always, always a joy. Cabernet Sauvignon is by far one of my very favorite uh, grape variety of them all. So I was talking about blends a little bit earlier because it's an important point to describe Cabernet Sauvignon wines. Indeed, in many countries, Cabernet Sauvignon is blended with other varietal wines. And that's for a simple reason, well, that's pretty much to make the wine taste better. Cabernet Sauvignon can be a bit of a rather tannic and sometimes, you know, a rustic uh, wine with a solid acidity and feel a little edgy and sharp on the palate when it's bottled on its own. So winemakers often use wines with a rounder and softer texture to mellow it up and make for a more harmonious whole that tastes smoother and softer on the palate. As I was saying earlier, typically in Bordeaux, they would use Merlot for this because the tannic structure is super smooth on Merlot, as well as sometimes a bit of Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot to form what I was talking about, the Bordeaux blend. But even in the US, a wine labeled as Cabernet Sauvignon can contain up to 25% of other grapes without the winery while telling you anything about it. So in fact, factually, a lot of Cabernets in the US are in fact red blends. Another typical blend with Cabernet Sauvignon is Syrah and Shiraz, a blend that has become the speciality of the Australians. Well, for the same reasons, that's again for smoothing up the edgy side of Cabernet with richer, more textural Shiraz wine. The typical flavor profile of Cabernet Sauvignon is going to depend on its origin and its terroir, you know, the, the climate, the soil, and you know, where it comes from. But generally speaking, in Cabernet from a cooler climate, like Bordeaux or the Margaret River in Western Australia, as I was talking about earlier, or for example, the Santa Cruz Mountains in the San Francisco Bay area of California, you will find notes of acidic red berries such as the strawberry or raspberry, perhaps with hints of blueberry, 
as well as this very distinctive bell pepper aroma that is really the classic signature trait of cool climate cab and that's how you identify it often in a blind tasting. From warmer climates like most of California and warm countries like Australia, South America, Chile, Argentina or South Africa, Cabernet Sauvignon will have flavors of riper berry fruits such as blackberry or blackberry jam sometimes, blackcurrant or cassis as we say in French or dark ripe cherry. Now Capsov as more often than not is aged in oak barrels so we will also find some extra layers coming from the oak like the vanilla, cocoa together with sweet spices such as clove and licorice, nutmeg or cedarwood. With aging in the bottle as you mature Cabernet in your cellar the wines will typically develop more notes of leather, animal notes, forest floor or the signature wood ashes character found in all Cabernet Sauvignon wines. Because yes, Cabernet Sauvignon wines typically age very very well, one of the many reasons they are so popular, so demanded and often so expensive. Cabernet Sauvignon is certainly one of the most fascinating and refined wine that you can find well in the world. I hope you enjoyed this video, that was it. That was it for today, that was me. I hope you've learned something today, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine with our next video coming up next week. Cheers! Santé. As I was telling you, this video was made possible by this wine club called the Bonner Private Wine Partnership. With the Bonner Wine Club, we're releasing weekly wine education videos so you can become an expert and get to know everything that I know about wine. I'm sharing everything. So head over to their channel and subscribe to get your weekly facts of awesome wine content from me like this one and even further we're going deeper with this series then if you want even more access to newer wine videos from me and learn even faster plus receiving extraordinary wines that we select from all around the world well consider becoming a partner of the Bonner Wine Club link in the video description founded by Will Bonner the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import to the US excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. A great opportunity to get access to small batch wines. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest highest vineyards in the entire world way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen here, no additive packed supermarket wines, no inflated costs. Make sure to check out the link in the video description to learn more about this exclusive wine club and get more wine videos. But for now, yeah, I'll see you soon in the wonderful world of wine.